inherited. We actually had two Tonys, where Tony Sr. started it and Tony Jr. runs it now, and they moved out from New Orleans. And obviously, Lena has that same thing, tradition carrying on a lot from her father. And, and Mike's got a family heritage as well. So it's really neat that we're close to Father's Day and in between Mother's Day, and we're, we're here celebrating people who are continuing the legacies. Now, therefore, I'm Michael Eschen, president of Jefferson Parish, do hereby proudly proclaim June 9th, 2016 as Lena Prima Day. Give it under the hand of the seal of Jefferson Parish for the ninth day of June. And look, you, you gotta share this day with National Sears every day, which I screwed up. <laughs> I, I say that's a high honor for some people. It is, absolutely. I'm proud, so proud. And the world feels like a prison to me. Welcome to Celebrating Culture. It is Italian Republic Day, and we're here with Lena Prima, who is the honoree of this year. Lena, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, and I am honored. Thank you. So, Lena, Mike Yenning, who's also a Sicilian, yes. has named the day after you. What's it like to have a day named after you? Well, I'm really overwhelmed. It's really amazing, and I was just sort of sitting and thinking about it and going, I, I, everything's usually about honoring my father, and I'm all about honoring my father, and this is the first time something is named after me, so <laughs> I feel now a responsibility to make something cool happen on this day, maybe next year. I don't realize, but the year. baton has been passed. Just <laughs> yes, like, you, know. you have just passed it. <laughs> so I won't let you down. I won't <laughs> let you down. Lena has just been amazing for New Orleans. She performs at so many places, singing the great songs of her father, and just the culture in Baton Rouge, Biloxi, Mississippi, just all over New Orleans. Lena. There's a lot of energy, there's a lot of Sicilians in New Orleans. You must be busy all the time. What's it like in going out to all these different clubs? It's wonderful, and there are a lot of Sicilians in New Orleans, and I love being a part of the different um, organi Italian organizations and um, carrying on the legacy of my father and his family, you know, coming from Sicily to New Orleans, and my father starting as a little boy playing music, and the, the music he created and took all around the country, and he's famous all around the world, really, for the New Orleans style that he had, and the Italian songs, and the heritage, and I, it's my honor, and I'm really proud to be carrying that on. His uh, family did uh, uh, immigrate to New Orleans in the late 1800s. What, what brought him here? Well, um, it's my understanding that um, in Sicily, uh, Sicilians couldn't own their own land. So they all wanted to come to America for the land of opportunity so they could actually be um, landowners and start their businesses and carry it on, pass it down through the generations, which has really happened. I mean, look at uh, New Orleans right now and the generations of families that are carrying on their families' So they landed businesses. in the French Quarter. Was that yes. called a certain area? It was called Little Palermo. It was. Yes, yes. There were so many Sicilians that it was called And your Little grandparents Palermo. started there? Yeah, they, cer they certainly did. Uh, my father's father um, drove a soda truck, a Dr. Nut truck. He that, did? Yes. Oh my God. And his mother was a... Uh, um, she actually was a singer and she did minstrel shows. Oh, so, so the voice is yes, in the family. Yes, absolutely. So she was very proud of her son, Louis Prima. Absolutely. Now, he really, I think, it went from the big band people. He wrote big band music mm -hmm. and then was the transition to like the Rat Pack. He was in that middle era. He was. Scene. He actually started at the Sanger Theater. That's where he got all of his experience being a leader and a trumpet player and an entertainer. And he took that and went to New York. He became uh, famous for the big bands. They renamed 52nd Street Swing Street because of what my dad started. And then he went to Vegas and uh, realized the potential of Las Vegas. He was one of the first people. What, what year about that? That was in the early 1950s. And um, he got a gig at the Sahara Hotel, and he recruited Sam Butera, who was a New Orleans boy as well, played the saxophone. Butera's obviously a yeah, New Yeah, so Orleans he theme. moved to Vegas, and they started with Keely Smith, Sam Butera, and the Witnesses of the Sahara, and they were there for nine years. The Rat Pack, before they were the Rat Pack, used to come and get up on stage and cut up with my dad. And they did. And that's how they formed the Rat Pack. Wow. Yeah. So, so like... That whole Dean Martin Sinatra, yes. they would they would be there coming yeah, up and absolutely. And then it was it. Yeah. Now, did you grow up in Vegas? Or were you I did. I was born in Las Vegas, and my dad also kept a home um, in Covington across the lake. There's and a street now, Louis Prima. Yeah, there where the golf course used to be. Yeah. So we moved back and forth when I was a child, and I got to go to school in uh, at Holy Rosary in New Orleans. I also went to school across the lake. 
um, St. Peter's and Covington High, and then finished high school in Las Vegas. But, but you found the calling because New Orleans is, is a very historic town. Yeah. So you are seeing, whether it's the Monleon Hotel or mm -hmm. the, the, the Piazza, so many places singing the music. You've got your own voice, you've got your own style, but yet you also give a great tribute to the history of what's going on. In Absolutely. The I feel like that's really important and it's part of what I'm supposed to be doing, you know, um, honoring my father and his music. It's great music and people that come to New Orleans, I think, I really believe and feel and see that they want that. They want that they, music. They're into it and they love it. So it's it's really <laughs> great. It's give and take. <laughs> it's been neat watching because like when I go to your, your events, they are, it's unbelievable, three, four hundred people with their lounge chairs in a, a parking lot. Yeah. You know, if it's at an Italian festival in Canada, sure. wherever it is, you bring them in. Yes, I love um, performing the music and it feels great to me. I love what I do. I love being on stage and I have loved it since I was a little girl. The, the big question I always ask. <laughs> It seems like, I know my grandfather, same thing, they protect their recipes. So what's it like <laughs> learning how to cook Italian without being told what the recipe is? Well, when I first wanted to know how to make certain dishes that my mother made, um, she would say, well, didn't you watch me all those years make the thing? <laughs> like, you should know, you know, you should have been paying attention. So you're already in trouble for <laughs> even asking for the recipe. So then she would give you kind of how to do it. But I always, you know, it would fail miserably, and I'd call her up and go, that isn't right. <laughs> so she would finally reveal if I promised never to ever tell anybody the ingredients swear. or put it in print. Yeah, I had to swear in order to get the correct <laughs> ingredients in the recipe. But yeah. So you you got them? I did get them, but she still did, never said exactly how to, like they you had to pinch. figure it out. Yeah. Exactly. Just a little to cover the top or, you know. <laughs> You know, so you had to figure it out. I had to make meatballs like a hundred times to figure out the right exact way. So, you know? Do you think that's their story is that they want you to have to figure it out? They do want you to figure <laughs> it out. They do. They want to take that secret recipe because they're so proud of that cooking. You know, they are. All of them. <laughs> Everybody's mother. Yeah. You just see the culture in New Orleans expanding. As far I as do. As pride. I hope so, and I love it. And yeah, I do. I do feel like there's a, uh, a an energy, and it and it seems to be getting bigger. It really does. So every, I think all the Italians and the younger generations that are putting on the events and all the different Italian communities around Louisiana definitely are fired up. I see it being passed down, and everybody wants to continue it and grow it. So I think that's amazing. It is. I'm and glad to be part of it. You are, and you're like the hub, really. Oh, well, thank you so much. I <laughs> well, I want to thank you, and it was Lena. Thank Thank day you so in New much. Orleans Yay. and Mike Guinea and <laughs> it's just been wonderful. So. Thank you. I'm honored. Thank okay. you. Right. Thank you for being on cultural oh. <laughs> I forget we you know. It's a lot of wine. <laughs> All right, we need to just have that in. Let me just pick it right here. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> Bellare, Italiano. Arrivederci.